right. together. God bless you. Oh, God bless you. Thank you for being with us on the helpline. Oh, it is my pleasure. I'm honored to be here. Thank you for this opportunity to share. And, and listen, I, I got to say this, okay. please, while we're seated here together, mm -hmm. I know after that incredible rendition, you're going to want to go to helplinetv.com, yes. and you're going to want to get Dwayne Woods' CD. What is the title of this CD? Uh, it's called Introducing Dwayne Woods and When Singers Meet. Um, it, when Singers Meet is actually a, a, an aggregation of singers from Kansas City, which is where I'm originally from. Uh, so it kind of introduces both, both singing aggregations. Do you have that song on the CD? Yes, sir. That song wow. is on there. <laughs> okay. So you better go quickly to helplinetv.com and get your order in. Tell us, this is an amazing experience that you've had in your life. Yes, Lord. Tell us a little bit about your background. Where are you from? I'm originally from Kansas City, Missouri. I was born and raised in Kansas City. Were they you were raised up in a Christian I was, home? I was actually, I was born right after Sunday morning service. <laughs> <laughs> if you can believe it. My mother had a plan. She said, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go to church on Sunday morning. I'm going to lead the song in the choir. Go go home and warm up the food for the family. Go go to the hospital. I'm gonna have you. I'm gonna lay down at night and watch a movie. And she did it in that order. Oh, <laughs> and when, you, when did you start your music career? I started. I did my first concert at five years old. Wow. <laughs> so I, my mother was a singer. Uh, all the all the women in my family could sing. My, none how, of me. How had. many how many brothers and sisters? I have did two you? sisters and one brother. My brother can't sing to save his life. Neither <laughs> can my dad. So I, I I was one of the blessed ones to come out. My sisters both my sisters can sing, and my mother was actually a recording artist. And and I understand that you have sang with some of the leading. Of vocalists and yes, artists. Yes, Tell sir. us a little bit about some of those experiences. Oh wow! Uh, I mean, some of the major experiences of my life. Uh, traveled with a, with uh, John P. Key. Uh, uh, had two years that I was singing with them, and then of course this is my tenth year being with Donald Lawrence and the Tri City Singers. I've had the opportunity to share with Celine Dion on stage. I was one of the background singers for uh, one of her tours. Uh, my choir was actually one of the choirs that they chose to, to back her up. And same thing with Kirk Whalem. They would come into the city, and whenever they would need singers together, they would call us to make it happen. So you know, I've been really blessed in my career just to be able to to, to sing with the likes of, of wonderful people and to learn from these people. How how does one get HIV without a promiscuous lifestyle. Well, there's, I mean, there's so many ways that you can get it. Of course, there's, there's uh, through blood transfusions. You know, some people that, that, that deal with drugs. You weren't promiscuous. No, well, no, I did get it from a sexual, sexual encounter, though. Oh, you did? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. It was a sexual encounter. And, and one of the things that we don't really teach is that, um, some of the leading people that carry the HIV virus is black women. They are probably one of the highest rated statistics that we have in this, in this country. And so uh, you just never really know what one encounter. So where, where were you living spiritually when you had this? I was in that in between time. You know, you, you're growing up, you're becoming a teenager, and you, you know, you're just kind of living that life where you're like, I want to do my own thing. Of course, I grew up in church. And, and of course, it's like the prodigal son. You'll go away for a minute. But of course, when, you're, when your background has been in church, train up a child in the way that he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. So uh, that was just kind of where I was. I was just right in the middle. You know, you, you, you weren't you're, married. No, sir. No, sir. I wasn't married at the time. And, and you know, just, just how did you discover own. that you had HIV? I was actually traveling on the road with a play, a play called A Good Man is Hard to Find. And we were in Chicago, Illinois. And right after the show was over, I collapsed. At that last, at that last point of falling out, the business manager came to me. She said, you really need to go to the, to the hospital just to kind of see how you're doing, have a physical, see what's wrong with you. So I went in. And at that time, they test you for everything. And one of the tests that they, uh, that they ran on me was for HIV, HIV and AIDS. And so went in the, the very next week, they called us back. We were sitting in Chicago for a while. So they called me back and said, we really need you to come in so we could discuss your, your test results. Went in, and that's what the doctor told me. He said, you tested positive for HIV. We need to start you on a treatment so that we can help kind of combat this disease. And at the time, I didn't live in Chicago, so I told them I would much rather go to Kansas City. I would much rather go home, get a second opinion, just kind of see. And I was devastated at that time. So I, it took me a minute to really go in and have a final testing done 
went back into Kansas City to my actual doctors and let them run a test on me, and that was the ending result. I tested positive for HIV. Did but, you start taking the medication? Yes, medicine? sir. I started taking the medication. I was actually faithful with it, too. I, I definitely believe that, that faith without works is dead. I believe God to be a healer, but I also believe that he's given to us everything that pertains to life and godliness. So if the doctors have the ability to know what will be able to help you, I suggest for people to well, do Spiritually, <laughs> where were you at this time after you discovered that you had HIV? It, it wavered. I was definitely strong in the Lord, and I was definitely believing God for healing, but there are those days that, you, that you're sick, that you don't feel like, you know, anything is happening. You feel like that, okay, well, maybe this is not going to be the ending result for me. Maybe, I, maybe I'm not going to be healed for it. And I was going through, teetering and tottering with that, you know, with that whole mindset. God, I want to believe you. I want to trust you, but I'm in pain. I don't understand what's going on, you know. And, and when you get to that point, there's a point when you have to just say, God, you know what, I'm not going to worry about it anymore. And it was that breaking moment for me where I said, God, I'm going to believe you more than what I see, more than what I feel. I'm going to trust you. If I'm going to sing about you being a healer, I believe that you can heal me. Yeah. And that's really where I, I made a stand and said, I'm not going to doubt it anymore. If I feel sick, I feel sick, but I just believe that I could kind of speak myself back into health. And that's what I started doing, speaking over my life. I documented that seven years. In 1999, I uh, shared my Did you take medicine for the whole seven I years? I took, took medicine for the whole seven years. I also started on a, um, they call it a holistic treatment, where you start taking, like, basically, like, like vitamins and herbs just to kind of help strengthen your immune system and your, and your body. And I, I started that along with the prescription medicine. And were you growing spiritually during Most this definitely. Time? I was growing by leaps and bounds. Of course, worship became like one of the, the strongest points of my life. Uh, even down to when I was in the hospital, the only thing that I could do was worship. The only thing I could do was sing. Every time the doctors would come in and they would run a different test on me, I'd sing a new song. I believed <laughs> God so much and I trusted him so much. I said, God, you gave me this voice. I'm going to give it back to you. That's the only way that I was able to let go and watch him leave. And so after a long period of time? So I went in after that, after that long period of time, let them run the test. They didn't even recognize me because it had been that long since I had been to them. So let them run the test on me. Uh, at that time, you had to come back in a week later for your results. Went back in. The very same people that diagnosed me, the very same people that had treated me, told me that I had tested completely negative. Wow. So what did... How did that affect you? What did you say to the doctor? I, t I looked at the doctor. I said, are you absolutely sure? <laughs> you know, because you, you, you're going, this is what I've dealt with for all of these years. You, okay, it's that fast? You know, are you, are you sure? And he asked me, he said, yes, why? I said, you all were the ones that have tested me. You've diagnosed me. You know who I am. You let, we have to, is this the, is this the final thing? So they were so baffled at it. They said, okay, let's send you through the test again. So they, sent, they, they, did, they ran the test on me again. Went back in the following week, same results, completely negative. Praise God. Now, did you, after that, did you stop taking the medication? I did. I stopped taking the medication. I kept, I, I kept with the, uh, the holistic approach because that basically you just felt better. I felt but so much better. But the prescription medicine? the prescription medicine, I have not been on prescription medicine since 2000. Since 2000? Since 2000. And do you, do you go back and have mm -hmm. examinations? Yes. And what do the doctors keep telling you? Completely negative. Negative. Completely negative. Negative. Yes. Negative. Every time you go in, negative. same report. Same report. And whose report will you believe? That's I believe the report of the Lord. <laughs> and Dwayne, what about a little word to somebody out there? Because there's a lot of people watching this program. What would you say to them? I would say to them, Definitely to believe that you serve a God that cannot lie and cannot fail, cannot fail. He's a God that's able to heal anything. If you're able to give up the hardest thing that's a part of your life for him, he's able to give you the hardest blessing of your life. And I am a firm believer that when you turn everything over to him, you trust him with your heart, you trust him with your life, even through the pain, even through the sorrow. There were times that you even feel depressed, you're going through tears. But if you could trust God past that, know that he's a God that has begun a good work in you, and he will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Don't get weary in doing well, but know that God is going to work things out for your life. Thank you so much oh, for being you. here with us. What an inspiration Praise God. you have been today. Thank you.